Hello great team, so this is um, your day 47, lesson 7 of analytical geometry, the last lesson. Um, so now what you're going to do is you're going to do these questions from the textbooks revision on page 203, number D and K. Quickly pause the video, do those questions and then um, get back to the video for the memo. Okay, welcome back to the revision memo. So the first question says, refer to the diagram alongside. Determine the gradient of AC. Okay, so the gradient of AC, we're going to use the coordinates of A and C. To determine the gradient, if you can remember, it's delta Y over delta X. So it's the Y value subtracted over the X value subtracted. So it's 5 minus negative 4 over 1,5 minus negative 3 gives me 9 over 4,5 and that is 2. So the gradient of AC is 2. Okay, I'm just writing that down on the sketch. Then number 2 asks, determine the length of BC one decimal place. Okay, so I have to determine the length of BC. That's that line. Okay, so I'm going to use the coordinates of B and of C. Okay, so for the distance, I would use the distance formula, which is BC is e BC squared is equal to the x value subtracted squared plus the y value subtracted squared. So it's 1,5 minus 4 squared plus 5 minus 0 squared. So BC squared gives me 31,25. To get rid of the squared, I get the square root. And that gives me that BC is 5,6. So this length, BC, is equal to 5,6. Right, number three, determine the coordinates of M, the midpoint of line AB. Okay, so M is the midpoint of AB. So for the midpoint, I add the X values divided by 2, add the Y values divided by 2. So it's 4 plus negative 3 divided by 2. And 0 plus negative 4 divided by 2 gives me that M is the point a half and negative 2. So it's a half, negative 2. That's the coordinates for M. Then number 4, determine the coordinates of D. Okay, so D is this point on line AC. Okay, so... If I have three points on the same line, like A, D, and C, we say that they are collinear. And what is the property that we learned of collinear? That they all have the same gradient. So if this whole line AC has a gradient of 2, then this little part AD must also have a gradient of 2. This point D has a coordinate of an x value of 0 and a y value that we don't know. Because it's on the y axis, we know that the x coordinate will be 0 and we just call the y value just y for now, just to work it out. So, in my answer, I say the point D would be 0, y. The gradient of AD, let's work out the gradient of this little part AD. Okay, so that's going to be the y value subtracted over the x value subtracted. So it's y minus negative 4 over 0 minus negative 3 gives me y plus 4 over 3. Okay, y plus 4 over 3, that is the gradient. So now, point D lies on line AC. Okay. So that means that the gradient of AD is equal to the gradient of AC is equal to the gradient of DC. All the gradients are equal on that line. So I take the gradient that I got for AD and I set it equal to 2 because I got in number 1 that the gradient of AC is 2. Now I'm going to work out Y. So it's going to be 3 times 2 is 6 and y plus 4 is equal on the other side. So then I subtract the 4 on the other side and I get y is equal to 2. So the coordinates of d, that's what they asked for. So I have to write down the coordinates. d has the coordinates 0, 2. Okay, then number 5. 
Show that BD is perpendicular to AC. Okay, let's just see oops, what lines we are talking about. We have to show that BD is perpendicular to IC. Okay, BD perpendicular to IC. BD perpendicular to IC. Okay, so to determine if something is perpendicular, we do the gradients. And if the gradients multiplied um, are equal to 1, then um, then I have perpendicular lines. So first I determine the gradient of BD. The gradient of BD, remember D has the coordinate 0, 2 now. So it's the Y value subtracted over the X value subtracted gives me negative half. The gradient of AC, we know, we worked it out in question 1, is 2. So then I multiply the gradients of BD and AC, and that's negative half times 2 gives me negative 1. That is the correct answer. So BD is perpendicular to AC. Okay, so you could have used Pythagoras also. In the tri this triangle, you could have used Pythagoras to show that, or actually the converse of Pythagoras to show that that D is a right angle. Right, then number K. K says, in the diagram below, two circle centers, M22, so let's write that down, M as the coordinate 2, 2, and C respectively, C is the center point of the bigger circle, are drawn such that they are uh, tangent, sorry, tangential touching at B. Okay, so they are touching at B. B is a point on the larger circle such that MBC is a right angle triangle. If the radius of the smaller circle is 2 with BM 4 units and BCR. Okay, so the radius of the small circle is 2 which means MP is 2 and from M to the side of the circle there is also 2 units because everywhere the radius would be the same. Okay, let's read the question. The question says, determine the coordinates of B. Okay, B. Okay, so M is at the point 2, 2 and 4 units to the right we find B. So the Y coordinate will definitely stay the same but the X coordinate will be added 4. So the, the coordinates of B would be 6, 2. Okay, so B is 6, 2. Then number 2. The coordinates of C in terms of R. Okay, so from B, we can go straight up to find C. So the X value will stay the same. It will definitely still be 6. And the Y value will be 2 plus R because it's 2 with 6 up, which gives me R up. Oh, sorry, it's 2 and R units upwards, so it's going to be 2 plus R. So that's the coordinate of C. Then number 3, the length of the radius of the larger circle. The length of the radius of the larger circle, we're going to determine by taking Pythagoras of this triangle. Okay, so Pythagoras, let's see what um, sides lengths we do have. So we know that the radius of the bigger circle is called R. So that, that means that PC is also R long. So from M all the way to C would be 2 plus R. Then we have BM, it's 4 units, and CB is called R. So let's do Pythagoras. Pythagoras says that MC squared, the longer side, the hypotenuse, would be equal to MB squared plus BR squared. Ah, oh, sorry, BC squared. And that is Pythagoras. 
So then we substitute in what we have. MC is 2 plus R as we said. So it's 2 plus R squared is equal to MB which is 4 squared plus BC which is R squared. Now I square this first bracket so it's the FOIL rule and I get 4 plus 4R plus R squared is equal to 16 plus R squared. Then I can put in an extra step here. I take all the R's to the one side. 4R plus R squared minus R squared is equal to all the numbers on the other side. 16 minus 4. 4R plus R squared minus R squared just gives me 4R. 16 minus 4 gives me 12. Then I divide by 4 on the other side and I get R is equal to 3. Okay, so that means that the radius of the larger circle is equal to 3. Alright, so if you have any questions, you can email your teacher. That's it for today.